In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Today, for me, is the first Sunday to say a Mass, to celebrate the Holy Eucharist publicly since I got sick. So I offer this whole Mass to thank God and in a special way to thank you for the prayers and the good wish you had for me. I'm like this because of your prayers. You were so louder to God to the point that God granted what you were praying for. This is my witness that I am like this because of you. Without your prayer, I could not be like this. So I'm offering this Holy Mass to thank you, to pray for you so that God may continue protecting you as well as giving me good health so that I can continue to serve him and to serve you. Today is the 11th Sunday. Jesus is comparing the kingdom of God with the smallest seed. What does it mean? The two parables which we will hear from the gospel reading today show how God operates. That is the challenge to me, is challenge to you, that we need to operate as God is operating. How is he operating? Silently and gradually. But at the end, the result is positive. So two things today we have to meditate upon. Patience and hope. For the many times we have failed to, to operate silently and sometimes we need things to happen immediately. Let us ask God to forgive our sins. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have raised sin in my thoughts, in my words, in my what I've done, and what, what I've done to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Friends, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the God of God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Here we
Let us pray. Our God, strength of those who hope in you, graciously hear our pleas. And since without you, mortal frailty can do nothing, grant us always the help of your grace that in following your commands, we may please you by our resolve and our deeds. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. Thus says the Lord God, I too will take from the crest of the cedar, from its topmost branches, tear off a tender shoot, and plant it on a high and lofty mountain. On the mountain heights of Israel, I will plant it. It shall put forth branches and bear fruit and become a majestic cedar. Birds of every kind shall dwell beneath it, every winged thing in the shade of its boughs. And all the trees of the field shall know that I, the Lord, bring low the high tree, lift high the lowly tree, wither up the green tree, and make the withered tree bloom. As I, the Lord, have spoken, so will I do. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, we are always courageous, although we know that while we are at home in the body, we are away from the Lord. For we walk by faith, not by sight. Yes, we are courageous, and we would rather leave the body and go home to the Lord. Therefore, we aspire to please him, whether we are at home or away. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, so that each may receive recompense according to what he did in the body, whether good or evil. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Jesus said to the crowds, This is how it is with the kingdom of God. It is as if a man were to scatter seed on the land and would sleep and rise night and day, and through it all the seed would sprout and grow. He knows not how. Of its own accord the land yields fruit, first the blade, then the ear, then the full grain in the ear. And when the grain is ripe, he wields the sickle at once, for the harvest has come. He said, To what shall we compare the kingdom of God, or what parable can we use for it? It is like a mustard seed that, when it is sown in the ground, is the smallest of all the seeds of the earth. But once it is sown, it springs up and becomes the largest of plants and puts forth large branches so that the birds of the sky can dwell in its shade. With many such parables, he spoke the word to them as they were able to understand it. Without parables, he did not speak to them, but to his own disciples, he explained everything in private. The Gospel of the Lord. My dear brothers and sisters, at the beginning of the Mass, I said, the two parables show how God makes things happen. Two things we can learn from the two parables. God operates silently, 
and gradually. So the challenge to me, the challenge to you, we have to operate silently and gradually. God is not a politician. He's not a businessman who advertises or publicizes the things which he does. Silently and gradually. So the two virtues which we need to ask ourselves today is the virtue of patience and the second virtue, the virtue of hope. At last, the outcome will be positive. I know the society pushes us. We need things to happen now and here. But that is not the style of God. The things will happen, but gradually and silently. He doesn't need to publicize. So today we pray for those two, patience, those two virtues, patience and hope. The seeds growing without us knowing how it is growing. Take yourself as the seed. Being created in the image and likeness of God is the seed which God has planted in you, his image and likeness. Then we were baptized. God gave us another seed. The small faith when we were babies. But that seed needs to grow up. And how can it grow? We need to do two things. Prayers and the work of mercies. Those are the things which will help us to make the seed to grow. Prayer life and the work of mercies. But as I said, the society pushes us. We need things to happen soon, immediately. But as St. Paul says, we are walking by faith and not by sight. If we don't like to stumble, walk by faith. What does it mean? Everything which I do, I speak, I have to ask before. Does what I'm doing or what I'm speaking pleases God? That is walking by faith. I see the things in this world in the eyes of faith, and it will be different from the rest of the people. And that is walking by faith and not by sight. And sometimes we can be discouraged and say that, but this small thing, it doesn't affect, it will never change anything. What God needs, your heart. Just what you put in what you are doing. It doesn't matter how small it is. The smallest of the smallest seed is growing and it becomes a bush. Whereby the birds come and the rest on that bushes. So whatever you do, even if it's so small, for God is so important. Just you put your heart there, it will grow. He's going to multiply it and become something big. Therefore, nothing is small to God when it is offered with great heart. We should not be intermediate. In intermediate, 
We should not be afraid to do small things. Let us begin with the small things. Slowly, they, will, they are going to grow up and they become bigger and bigger. And sometimes we ask a wrong question. How can the kingdom of God grow? The right question should be this. What should I do to grow so that I can bear fruit? The kingdom of God is within me. So when I ask myself, how can I grow so that I can bring the fruits? That is the expansion of the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God is not outside me, it's within me. I have to grow myself. By growing inside myself, I can affect also my neighbors, my friends. But we should be aware that the kingdom of God grows gradually. Let us be patient with ourselves. It does not happen overnight. And when it grows, we don't know how it grows. Only God knows. So every day, for example, if I'm not a prayerful person, if I cannot go for the adoration of the Eucharist, you go just for five minutes. You start with five minutes. Stay before the Jesus of Eucharist for five minutes for the first time. Slowly, you will, you will understand that five minutes are not enough. You will take 10 minutes. Slowly, from 10 minutes, 15 minutes, half an hour, an hour. Don't start with one hour. Just start even with two minutes. That is the kingdom of God. When I start slow, gradually, gradually, I will experience inside myself that I need more and more. And then I will reach one hour. The kingdom of God has not reached its fullness. So our job is to nourish it through our prayers and good works. When we go out of this mass, let us ask ourselves, how am I going to expand the kingdom of God? What the impact I'm going to put to my family so that I can expand the kingdom of God. We have the responsibility of expanding the kingdom of God since we are the children of God. We have to work gradually, silently, when we expand the kingdom of God. So we need patience. At the same time, we need hope that at the end, I know the kingdom of God gets opposition from Satan. But at last, the kingdom of God is going to win. Sometimes we are frustrated. We say that, we don't know what will be the end. When we look at the society today, the world today, we think that everything is going to collapse. Never. At last, God is going to win. Never Satan. We have to walk by faith and not by sight. The first reading from prophet Ezekiel, what he says was counter to what was happening at that time. They were in the exile, and then 
He's saying that God is going to rule. It was impossible. But with the hope, everything is possible. We need patience. I should not forget, today is Father's Day. I know that Mother's Day, we give flowers to mothers. Then yesterday I was just asking for the fathers, what do you give for the fathers? They say nothing, nothing. I say nothing, no. There's something which we are going to give to fathers. The blessings, the blessings, which are so important. So we are going to offer the blessing to the fathers today so that they can imitate the example of St. Joseph as the model of all fathers. The way Joseph kept his family is an example of all fathers to look for their families. I ask you to stand so that I can, we can give the blessing to the fathers. If you are near your husband or your father, you can extend your hand on the shoulder of your father or your husband so that we can give them blessings. Let us pray. God, our Father, in your wisdom and love you made all things. Bless these fathers that they may be strengthened as Christian fathers. Let the example of their faith and love shine forth Grant that we, their sons and daughters, may honor them always with a spirit of profound respect. Grant thee through Christ our Lord. Amen. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. For all fathers we pray, our Father who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth that is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Let us profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him and all things were made, for us men and for our salvation. He came down from heaven, and by the Spirit was incarnated of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and was again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in God to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the faith and Father, Son, the Lord and the glorified, who has spoken through the prophet. 
I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. With trust in our merciful God, we offer him these petitions. That our Holy Mother Church may continue to receive the help of Christ in using her prophetic voice, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That all people may come to know that Jesus is Lord of heaven and earth, we pray to the Lord. That those who grow, prepare, and serve our food may be blessed abundantly, we pray to the Lord. That the seeds of faith planted in our hearts at baptism may continue to flourish and grow towards spiritual maturity, we pray to the Lord. For all the poor souls in purgatory, especially those who have no one else to pray for them, we pray to the Lord. For the parishioners of Emmanuel, for whom this Mass is being offered, we pray to the Lord. For fathers, may the Lord bless them on this day, and may they be strong in faith, ardent in hope, and generous in love, we pray to the Lord. For those intentions we hold in the silence of our hearts, and those written in our book of St. Monica. We pray to the Lord. Lord God, hear the prayers of your people and answer them in your goodness. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen.
brave brothers and sisters that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and for all our, our God, who in the offerings presented here provided for the twofold needs of human nature, nourishing us with food and renewing us with your sacrament, grant, we pray, that the sustenance they provide may not fail us in body or in spirit through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right. right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For through his Paschal mystery, he accomplished the marvelous deed by which he has freed us from the yoke of sin and death, summoning us to the glory of being now called chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for your own possession, to proclaim everywhere your mighty works, for you have called us out of darkness into our own wonderful light. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts of and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we proclaim. holy, O Lord, and from all holiness, make holy therefore these gifts we pray, by sending your spirit upon them like they do for so that they may become for us the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and each of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you 
and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and the resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and the blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Dennis, our Archbishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the Blessed Joseph, her spouse, Saint Gaspar, and with all the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may may to be coerced to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth that is in heaven. Give us this daily our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. <clears throat> Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and the unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace and the love of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you always. And with your spirit. Let be us offer each other the sign of peace. 
Peace be with you, Father. Peace be with you. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb.
Let us pray. At this reception of your Holy Communion, O Lord, foreshadows the union of the faithful in you. So may it bring about unity in your church through Christ our Lord. Bottles for babies to support Elizabeth New Life Center are being collected in the back of the church this weekend. The Evangelization Commission is asking you fill out a survey in the back of the church so that we can better serve your needs with regard to evangelization. Please place the completed forms in the wooden box. Registrations for Emmanuel's VBS, a wilderness adventure through the sacraments, are due soon. This weekend, as a matter of fact. Children aged four through sixth grade are invited to participate. Registration forms with additional details are online and in the back of the church. And next week, we will begin the permanent change to our mass schedule. The Saturday mass will begin at 5 p.m. Again, next week, the Saturday mass will begin at 5 p.m. There is no change to the times for our Sunday masses. And finally, the Emanuel Pro-Life Committee has a treat and a prayer card for all fathers, grandfathers, great-grandfathers, godfathers, and spiritual fathers. The committee members will be outside the church to greet you. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended.